The Build Show Build Boston series is sponsored by Alora Fiber Cement Siding, Mitsubishi Electric Train US, Roseburg, Shuko USA, and Warmboard. Show Build Boston. We're back. Now, I know I told you that framing was exciting and then roofing is exciting and all of these things, but maybe there isn't anything as exciting as plumbing. So we got Bob from RGC Plumbing here. What's up, Bob? How, How you doing, doing buddy? Nice to meet you, Steve. Pleasure to meet you. And uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about plumbing, rough plumbing to be exact. So as you remember in the house here, the house is shaped like an L. We're standing pretty much in the central portion of the house where we have the bedroom wing over here. Behind the camera, we have a uh, storage utility part of the basement there, one here. And, you know, early on, we had discussions about talking about water heaters and such. And we came up with the idea that probably the best solution would be to put two smaller ones in, one on this side of the house, one on that side of the house, rather than put one in and have to drain all that piping yep. to get hot water. So why don't we take a walk over here? We'll basically just start and we'll migrate this way and we'll talk about everything rough plumbing. Sure. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is the area just off the kitchen. You can have a plant room upstairs. You have your laundry, half bath and kitchen sink over in this area. Yeah, basically a lot of utility spaces up yeah. there. Exactly. Right. And I know yeah. in the, the plant room here, we can obviously start here. Yep. We actually have a floor drain in there. Yep. Just for any residual water on the floor, you can just sweep it right in there. So I always have a question. How do we keep the trap from drying out? We're going to have a trap primer connected to that. That will run up into the cabinet of the sink upstairs. And that device will be, oh, excuse me, that device will be located in the cabinet. So if you ever need to replace it or change it, if it fails, so every time I turn on the faucet and the sink in the plant room, Correct. it fills the trap and drains down any, through any the system. Any sort of pressure drop on that line on that sink will cause that to spit water into that trap. Okay. So as long as we're running that sink, yep, we're filling good. that trap. And of course we have the laundry room. I mean, some of this stuff is pretty much, you know, typical of all houses. Everybody has a powder room, but really it's about the strategy that we used here in that you know, we have the luxury of having these utility spaces that connect our sewer line exits here. We were fortunate enough to get that out underneath the footing. Yeah, which is perfect. So pretty much everything that you laid out and structured here is running due to gravity. Yeah. Right. We don't have any pumps here. We don't have any ejection pumps. Everything is basically flown by nature. Yeah. Right. And so you can see here we have basically all the plumbing here. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to it, Bob, you know, what, 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 what size pipes are we looking at? We have a lot of um, listeners that maybe not in the building industry. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between say plumbing the bathroom sink and plumbing the toilet? Um, so toilet's going to require a three inch strand line minimum. Okay. Um, we oversize this line actually coming over to the half bath. Okay. Picking up the laundry and your lavatories right there. Okay. Um, this is a back to back sink that's common vented upstairs. Okay. You have that little slop sink next to it in the laundry yes. room, separate from the laundry. Um, it was just, we had a extra three inch pipe and sometimes we oversize stuff, doesn't hurt. And I know pipes need, there's a required slope. Yep, quarter inch per foot, three, inch and, uh, three inch and under, and then four inch and over is eighth inch per foot. Eighth inch per foot, yep. okay. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, but like a lot of people say, oh, well, let's just put it in steeper, but you really don't want a steep no. pipe because you don't want the water to run over any solids that might be in the pipe. The water will rush out too fast and leave the solids behind causing a clog. Yeah, so you wanted to keep it that, that lower. So we have all this piping that comes over on this side of the house from all the utility space. It all comes down here. I can see, you know, we have a clean out here that allows us to snake the line out. Yep. To the septic system that's, that's going to be out in front that's of the your house. Full size four inch clean out for the house. Full size four inch clean out. What's the little pipe that comes out the side? So there? that's going to be a little slop sink he added down here. Gotcha. So that's going to end up rising up and drilling through all these studs. 
and the sink will be over there. We'll have a little slop sink in the storage area for yep. the homeowner. Now, what I think is a, a great thing in, the, in your strategy that you laid out, everything from here down and around the corner is now below grade. Correct. And we're able to do that because we're going out underneath the footing. Yep. So I know we can go back and we can look, but there's a, I think it's a four inch line that runs all the way down here and then turns 90. Yep. So a four inch line runs underground to that first bathroom and then it bushes down to three inch. Right, so it's basically right underneath our feet as we walk down through here. Yep. And then we capture everything in this bathroom. We have our shower, water seat is for water closet, and then obviously our sink drain. All of that stuff gets accumulated and comes down here and captures into Correct. that feed that exits outside the building there. Yep. And then this pipe here comes just on the other side, turns 90 and comes up this way Right over to here. Over to here. Yep. And this was about as far as you could push that slope, right? Yes. So we started coming through the concrete. And still have it coming and exiting there. So yep. a little math involved. You had to find out what the exit um, invert height is the technical term. And then back that up to as far as we could go. We're fortunate that all of this made it into the storage area. So we don't have any plumbing. Um, other than the one line that was required there, but we have an HVAC soffit and stuff that is already planned for there, so we'll build that in. Mm -hmm. um, this is a pretty interesting piece of uh, plumbing here. Yes, it is. That's my first. Your first one. Yeah. So I've done a couple of them, but uh, if you want to speak to what's going on here. Yeah, so basically it's a heat exchanger. Um, they call it a domestic hot water recovery unit. Um, I think, uh, I think houses use about 20 to 40% for hot water on their electric uh, capacity. This is gonna reduce that on your shower. So this is gonna give you uh, uh, 40 to 60% return as you're using it. Basically what it's doing is while you're showering, the hot water is going down the drain. Once it shoots to vertical, it starts to spin around the outside, right. causing a vortex. All that heat is on the outside of this pipe so now you have domestic cold water coming into here, feeding this coil right here, and then it's gonna absorb all the heat coming down the drain, and then it's gonna shoot out and go directly to the shower, or you can twin it so it goes back to your water heater and back to your shower. I got you. And so basically we're just, it's a, it's a preheat mechanism where exactly. we're using the waste medium yep. as our heating mechanism. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I always found interesting, and I remember the first time we put this in and talking to one of the reps, you know, you, you see a drain and you think, oh, well, the water just falls down through the drain, but no. it doesn't. It hugs the sides hugs of the, the side pipe. And that, that um, it makes an opening in the middle and that's actually your vent. Yeah. It allows air to drop the water down. Exactly. So I always thought that was very fascinating that most people think, oh, it's just a waterfall in there, but it isn't. Yeah. Um, fancy little doohickey here. What do we got going on there? Uh, so this just is a different type of dandy clean out. It's a okay. hold right product. It's a... Pretty, pretty good product compared to the old ones, pumping up. Can fill right from here. Um, this spins off and then you have a flush clean out. Okay. You just put a different cartridge in here and tighten it up. Instead All of right. using tape and dope, it has an O-ring on it, so it's. All right. And so this goes up and very much like on the other side, you know, we have our plumbing. Now, one of the things to recognize is you, you probably heard me say it before, I talk about clean basements and dirty basements. Dirty basements are places where I allow that to happen, Yeah. right? We don't want to see that in the media room. And when I say see that, um, what I mean by that is all of this plumbing that's dropping down, avoiding beams, et cetera. So this allows us by virtue of the way that that was planned, having this as the dirty basement, we have this whole area where it makes it pretty convenient for you as the plumber to be able to just drop things down and not find a way to hide them. Correct, yep. So I noticed one thing, I don't, well, we probably don't have it because of the drains here, but we can we can jump upstairs and we can talk about the strategy of laying it out. Mm -hmm. But I remember early on, you had flags, you drilled holes and then you dropped flags down, which I yeah. thought was ingenious. And I'll let you uh, tell us a little bit about what that is and why you do it. So it's just easier if you're in a, um, before we got here when we were first laying out, no temp lighting or anything. So when you're in a low lit area, it's just easy to see that high vis flag. 
Yeah. Drill your pilot hole, hangs down below the joists, and you can see them everywhere in the basement. You don't I have mean, to carry your ladder from point A to point B. I've worked with plumbers before and they'll drill a hole and like drop a nail down and you can imagine like, okay, I look up, is that the yeah, nail yeah, that I dropped? Yeah, or searching for is it. Is that the framer that missed the floor joist? Right. And by dropping the red flag and actually we can uh, take a quick walk down here because I, I think it's worth talking about. I think it's, it, you know, for all the young plumbers out there looking for tips and tricks, we actually have one hanging here. And uh, you know, it's pretty easy now, as the plumber, you're coming out here and you say, okay, there it is, red flag. Yeah. We know that we have a drain coming there. Correct. Um, so I'll tell you, why don't we jump upstairs? We'll do a little walk around and we'll talk about, you know, what are your thoughts behind laying things out and the, the strategy up there. Absolutely. So let's head on upstairs. All right, so we're upstairs. We're in the owner's bathroom here. You can see, um, we have multiple components. We have our water closet around the corner to my left and right against the exterior wall. We are going to have our vanities and then we have our drop down shower unit here. Um, I don't know if drop down showers pose any challenges to the plumber. Um, not necessarily. It's pretty um, much the same plumbing we're doing. It's just three inches lower. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I noticed down there, though, is there's a three inch trap, which is Seems uncommon to me for a shower. It is. Um, so in Massachusetts code, you're allowed uh, five shower heads max. As soon as you go over that, you need to increase that uh, drain size to three inch. Okay, so because we have multiple things happening in the shower. Correct. Thanks. Two shower valves, rain head, body sprayers, hand sprayer. There's a lot going on in there. So as clients get fancy, the plumbing gets fancy. Correct, yep. Right? Now, on the outside walls here, we have dual vanities. I can see that you've started plumbing for these. Obviously, yep. you know, as a plumber, the strategy is always run drain lines first, right? Because they're yep. the longest lines yep. or longest and, and the hardest to fit because they're the larger, yep. I guess is the point that I was um, searching out. And then all of the vent lines, and then you'll come back with the hot water and, and cold water lines. Now we have vanities that are going here. These vanities are going to be somewhat of a hybrid in wall mounted, whereas they're not truly wall mounted, but they'll have a very shallow pedestal. And the reason for the shallow pedestal is that we want to be able to bring our water lines up through the inside of the exterior wall. Now drain lines, vent pipes, you don't have a problem running no. those through the exterior wall, nope. obviously. Um, that water is going to go away. It's not going to freeze. We actually will bump up the insulation a little on the inside of that to help that situation out in certain cavities. But the water lines, we definitely don't want to be putting those in the exterior wall. Nope. We want to make sure those come up through the floor. So in the architectural design of each of the vanities, we'll have those uh, built in. So and we'll take care of that. I mean, other than that, I mean, I'd, I'd love to tell you there's a whole lot of magic to plumbing, but it's just a whole bunch of hard work and a little bit of knowledge and yeah. experience. And uh, I'm sure you've had could tell us all kinds of stories about having to maybe rip out a pipe because you went the wrong way. Or... I have plenty of stories, but not <laughs> enough time. <laughs> we don't have much time. So anyways, there you have it. This is Rough Plumbing. Got Bob from RGC Plumbing out here. And uh, we got a lot more to talk about on the house, but look into the future. We'll have Bob back when we're setting all of the fixtures and uh, we're in a real bathroom here. So until then, Build Show Build Boston. We're back at the studio. Got Big Red. Got Big Red back up. Um, but yeah, we haven't been here um, talking about drawings, so I figured I'd break out the drawings here, review a few of the things that we talked with with the plumber, give you some insight in what I was thinking about when I laid out the uh, house and the strategy that I thought for the plumbing. I mean, it's not necessarily the highest of priorities, but you know, when as an architect, when you're laying out the house, you want to give some consideration to uh, what you're doing with all the plumbing. So anyways, if you remember the floor plan, this is the first floor. We have the garage on the far left, the utility area here. We have the main living area, great room, kitchen and dining room and retreat in the middle of the drawing. And then we have the bedroom 
wing down here. So starting on the left hand side here, the utility wing, you can see we have the laundry room basically laid out in the middle of that. The two by six wall that the laundry equipment backs up to as well as a laundry tub there. That backs up to a wall for the powder room. And again, you know, most of the time it's, you know, there's there's some design in it, but some of it is just good fortune too, that the plans happen to lay out and things come together like that. So they were able to share a wall here, which just makes it real simple for plumbing. The only other plumbing fixtures on this side, we have another laundry tub here in the plant room, which is in close proximity. And then of course the kitchen sink. We don't want to forget about the kitchen sink, but those are all pretty darn close. We do have some auxiliary plumbing, like the uh, water tap, cold water tap there for the ice maker on the fridge, but that doesn't really have any drains or anything associated with it. This is the main plumbing, and you can see, you know, that is pretty much centered around this area here, which worked out really, really well. One of the other things that I like to do is Notice that the entry to the powder room, um, it's in a hallway that you get direct access off of the family room, great room, and kitchen. You also get pretty much direct access from the garage as well as if you came in from the outside here. It's down the hall. So the beauty of that is a lot of times I see plans um, where the powder room pretty much opens up onto one of the public spaces. And I call that a ta-da moment, right? You know, you're going to use the powder room, you come out, you open it up, everybody's staring at you, ta-da, you know, um, you get it. This allows us to have a little ante space here where you get to put yourself together, you get a second chance at putting yourself together before you basically get re released into that public realm. But, you know, this works out really nice. Like I said, that that's a pretty tight-knit group of plumbing fixtures. On this side of the house, we have the two bedrooms here and they're basically split by a bathroom. Now, these have all kinds of names. I typically call them a Jack and Jill. Um, other people have different names for it. Um, the reason I call it Jack and Jill is that Jack has the ability to stand here and brush his teeth at a sink while Jill has the ability to still take a shower or vice versa. Um, that we actually separate the toilet and tub with the sinks. So we have a wall in between them here so that someone can be using the sinks and someone can use the toilet and tub. And you're not locking out that bathroom by having one person go in and utilize that function. I've also, in some houses, have broken out the shower or tub into a third room. So we have a toilet closet, a tub room, and the sink room. But that was a house that had three daughters, all relatively close in age. So you do the math, figure it out, makes sense to have those all separated. And then lastly, we have the owner's bath down at the end. Um, I will tell you that when we were talking with the uh, clients about that where that goes, we basically have the walk-in closet, the bedroom proper, and the owner's bathroom that make up the owner's suite. And if we just call these placements one, two, and three, you'd understand that any one of these could be in any one of those configurations, right? We could have put the closet out at the end. We could have put the bathroom here. We could have put the bedroom closer and had the walk-in closet and bathroom over there. We could have had the bedroom out on the end and um, had those two closer to the inside. Um, the clients liked the idea of the closet. The closet helped buffer the owner suite from the guest bedrooms from a noise perspective. And putting the bedroom in the middle and then the bathroom to the outside was really based on a decision by one of the desires of one of the clients. And that was to have an outdoor shower. Now, we are proposing that we're going to have a pool out here. And so the pool would also have access to that shower. But 
we actually put what I call a walkthrough window. It's basically a door um, or a window that goes all the way to the floor that acts like a door, but it goes right out directly into the shower so that that shower can be used every day as you know your daily personal shower. You're just taking the shower outside instead of inside. The layout for the owner suite here was relatively simple. We have a couple vanities here, um, basically twins. They're the same size, one for each of the clients. Um, we have a linen closet here upon entry. We have a nice big shower here. The shower has a nice big bench, you'll see, and has a shampoo shelf. And then, of course, the toilet is in a little nook here, which is... Uh, Pretty interesting because a lot of clients, house this size, this type, they would really want to close that off, but they didn't really have a desire. It's, you know, kind of the furthest thing, deepest into that bathroom. So it offers privacy just by its position there. And of course, we got some nice transom windows there that are up high. But having that outdoor shower there, we get that on that wall and we'll be able to have those shutoffs and um, be able to drain down that system for the winter months down into the uh, dirty basement down there. So let's take a quick peek into that basement. So if you remember, we basically have a utility storage area here or part of a dirty basement. We'll call that dirty basement three. We have dirty basement two here, dirty basement one, obviously the garage unexcavated. But then we have this small portion um, in the middle here, which is a rec room, media room, we do have a bathroom downstairs here, centrally located. And again, it's slightly off the beaten path, so we don't have the ta-da moment. But it also gets you in pretty close proximity to the bedroom for here. So if another guest was staying here, you're not, you don't want you to have your guests walking across the house um, to use a bathroom. Um, and then, of course, the fitness room there. So having access to be able to use that if you're down there uh, working out or whatever is uh, working out really well. But given that we have a bathroom here, here, and here on this side, and then over here we had that kind of clump, if you remember, of spaces there, the thought in talking with the plumber was rather than do one large water heater and then run – you know, we're probably on the order of, I don't know, about 40, 45 feet here. And then likewise, another 30 or 40 feet to that bathroom. So you're going to be closing in on 80, 90 feet if we put the water heater here to the owner's bath. And that means every time you turn on the shower or whatever, you know, you're going to have to drain down those pipes of the cooler water before you get the hot water. Now, we could have put a loop in and did all of that, but our decision was that we would actually put a water heater here. Instead of buying one large water heater, we buy two smaller, um, and they'll be heat pump water heaters, and we'll place one there and we'll place one here. So this one here is taking care of this area, obviously, and this one here is going to be taking care of this area here. Um, so that would come compose of the bathroom above here as well as this bathroom. And then, of course, the owner's bathroom, by placing it back there, we gave the priority to the owner's suite, right? So it's the, you know, thing of it as a castle, the, the king of the castle gets the hot water first. So, um, And the plumber did a really excellent job. If you uh, remember in our walkthrough there, all of the plumbing here in the dirty basement, we allowed it to go down. This wall actually moved back about eight feet to here. Um, the homeowners wanted to expand that fitness center, but the plumber was able to get underground plumbing all the way to that location. So everything in here is overhead, purely okay. That's what the uh, dirty basement three was designed to do, allow for that. But that plumbing goes down into the ground and it goes down to here and then basically turns 90 and goes here and it exits here and goes out to our septic system, which will be down the hill out front. But the plumber did a really good job in getting that 
all the way into that dirty basement. And then we also have a riser here that all of this stuff will drain down into and go out. Now, as far as clean outs go, obviously you have a clean out there and you have a clean out here and we have a clean out there. But if you remember, he extended this pipe and we had that floor clean out in that closet. So that way there we can go through and uh, clean that all out. And the beauty of having that leg was this bathroom now can just, all of these fixtures can now connect into that and then run out into the septic system there. So um, basically that's the plumbing rough. I mean, you know, every house has its little intricacies in should we do this or that and then working out with the trades. But, you know, as an architect, I always like to fall back and have a meeting with these guys and talk through it, talk through it with the general contractor just to make sure. I mean, I'm not a plumber by trade. I do a lot of houses. I lay out a lot of bathrooms. But, you know, that for example, this guy did a really good job, um, the plumber here, at bringing that pipe all the way below grade um, into there. So and getting this to go out underneath the footing so we don't have any uh, exposed piping to have to deal with through the living space. So, you know, these guys are a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, as an architect, even though I've been doing it for years, I always choose to tap into these. These are some really smart guys in their profession in what they do, and it is definitely worth having a conversation with them. So anyways, that's it from the studio. Big Red is going to bed, and uh, that's our plumbing rough from the studio. <laughs>